Dr. Kirsch is a medical doctor specializing in internal medicine, medical oncology, and hematology. She's served as an investigator with the Northern California Childhood Leukemia Study of the UC Berkeley School of Public Health. And since 1983, she's worked with Physicians for Social Responsibility, <laughs> speaking on nuclear war and environmental issues. Dr. Kirsch also trained with the Climate Reality Project and serves as coordinator of the 350 Bay Area Speakers Bureau. She's also the Bay Area Chapter Leader for Climate Mobilization. Dr. Kirsch, thank you. So, I'm a, a medical doctor, hence the costume. My name really isn't Bob, though. Um, I stand with Physicians for Social Responsibility and with tens of thousands, many tens of thousands of nurses, of doctors, of healthcare professionals and public health specialists around the world standing up to the twin existential threats that we now face and they are nuclear war and climate disruption and make no mistake these two are inextricably entwined because when you have famine and you have drought you make nuclear conflict far more likely. Um, to talk about nuclear weapons I, I like to start with what sounds like a prayer. Um, we've already had a bit of a prayer today or a couple but it's not. Primum non nocere and you Latin scholars know that that means first do no harm. So it's also the motto of medicine. And what do you mean in, in nuclear war? What does it mean not to do harm? And it means this. You do not plan to fight a nuclear war. And you do not let people believe that it is possible. Because it is suicidal and it is insane. You make sure that people understand that the idea of a preemptive strike, that the idea that deterrence will not fail, that the idea that a ballistic missile, you know, a shield of some type could work, that these are insanity. And we, people like me, within the medical profession and the public health professions, say that we renounce all nuclear strategies save one. Ban the damn bombs. And so back to the medical paradigm again, let me talk very quickly and I will, I trained in New York so I can talk pretty quickly um, or Mary Leah will pull the cane. Um, and that is this, that if you talk about the acute effects of nuclear war and we all know what those are, but if only, we're talking about a limited nuclear war. So let's say a hundred Hiroshima-sized bombs, those are small bombs nowadays, are detonated. Then what would happen is that tens of millions of people around the world would die from the acute effects of heat blast and the immediate toxicity of radiation. That's more than died in World War II. Um, when we talk about the Oh, and then another semi or subacute effect would be that you would have, due to the soot and other debris from the explosions, you would be blocking out the sun and causing crop failures, especially grain failures around the world, the very staples that we depend upon, that the world depends upon, and a couple billion people would die in the, within the next few years. So those are the acute subacute effects. Let's talk about chronic effects. So. I'm a cancer doctor, and of course this is a particular concern to me, uh, because I would like to be, as a profession, extinct. Not as a species, but as a profession. Um, when, when we all know that nuclear warfare is associated with the widespread dissemination, would be associated with the widespread dissemination of radionuclides, and these things have been shown to cause every type of cancer, say possibly one kind of leukemia, but every other type. And we cannot allow this to happen on a massive level. Um, then, uh, we have to think about what is 
the effect of actually having nuclear weapons. The more you have, the greater risk you're, you're at. So as Eric Schlosser details in his great book, 2014 book, Command and Control, that we basically have some come so close to accidentally nuking our own country on multiple occasions, it has been sheer dumb luck that has prevented that from happening thus far, thus far. We've had bombs slipping out of aircraft, sliding out of submarines. I mean, they seem to be slippery little devils. Um, we've had silos explode uh, with not quite a detonation, but very nearly so. And this has been going on forever, uh, for since we've had nuclear weapons. And, it's, and, and we have leak, we, we have basically then releases of radionuclides. How many people have been killed when these broken arrows and other accidents happen? Nobody knows exactly, but through cancer and through the, the, work, through the effects of radiation. We don't know how many we've lost. The best measurements have actually been done at the nuclear labs that have shown, in fact, that employees and others have died. So the more bombs you have, the more you create, the more likely you are to kill yourself. Um, now let's, last thing, let's talk about money. Um, and we've got a trillion dollars allocated and more, as Marilia had, had indicated, for nuclear weapons within the next 30 years. And that's four million dollars an hour. What else might we be able to do with that kind of money? Okay, we talked about climate change, which is appearing, it is occurring more abruptly than has been predicted. And I think we can all recognize that. And we, wouldn't it be a magnificent thing if we could mobilize money and minds to get to carbon neutrality within several years, not several decades? Can anyone here imagine a, <laughs> anyone here imagine a peaceful Manhattan project where, along with the renewables, wherein one actually develops safe and effective and widespread ways to draw down carbon and protect us from that. Oh. That could happen. Anybody here interested in a well-funded, single-payer health care system? Yeah. I sure as hell am. And, and so, these are the things we should be spending our money on, not on weapons who can only be used to usher in the last day of civilization. So I stand before you, costumes aside, we're all doctors of destiny now, and what you do today matters, and what you say, it all matters, because we can and we must heal ourselves. Oh. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Is anybody feeling inspired? Yeah. We believe in peace. We believe in peace. We believe in peace. We believe in peace. Salam shalom. Peace, salam shalom. Peace, salam shalom. Peace, salam shalom.